Hello everyone, everyone. I am here for my review of The Oval Season 3, Episode 22, The Finale. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am Lady T. I like to do reviews on scripted reality shows as well as scripted shows. If you return, one of my people, welcome back. So, we have a few comments from last week. Karima says, a hair looks cute. You are very creative. Thank you, boo. When I was doing those Bantu knots, I think I said this in another video. I did, I put the Bantu knots in my hair because I was going to take them down so they could be curly. But then I was like, this looks cute. And I just kept them up for a week. So I think I'm going to do that every once in a while. Like once I get done, when these passion twists, one, they going to stay in for a minute because these bad boys took five hours to put in. Me doing them myself. That's me standing up five hours doing the parting and all the twisting so these bad boys is gonna stay in there for a good little minute but you know once i take these down i'll probably just keep my hair in some bantu knots for a good little minute before i put some up passion twist in if i do that because baby they are so cute but putting them in a whole nother story kareem also says i don't think jason is dead because jeremy carter read several synopsis and i believe jason was in them but we will see we never know with Tyler Perry, especially this episode. Uh, it was seeming like it was going to turn into how the have and the have nots turned out. They last episode where everybody went into the arms of the angel and forever in the flames, and the only person that was left was Hannah. That's where it seemed like it was going on this episode. But I was like, we never know with Tyler. I'm I'm thinking that he not forever in the flames, but we shall see. Uma Storytime World says, appreciate for the um, shout out. I think you need superior acting skills to overcome Tyler Perry's struggle writing. Yeah, you could be the best actor in the world. But like when you got to be putting on these extra emotions and all that stuff. It's going to come off like you can't act because. Yeah, I guess it's like that. No shade to Tyler Perry. No shade at all. So let's get into this episode. So Priscilla, she in the kitchen and like she already knows something don't smell right. Her gut is telling her that something is off. And I was like, well, no, everything's fine. She wants to know how many times Donald has come to the house. She's wanting, she's wanting no A, B, C, and D. And he's like, why are you asking all these questions? You just a cook. Yeah, and, and, even if she was just a cook, she's asking questions that, you know, needs to be some serious questions right about now. But, you know, he kind of like half drunk. So he's not really taking things seriously. He tells her, he told her that Donald came over one time when um, creepy serial killer Jason had snuck into Ellie's car and he had planned to put her in the arms of the angels. He had to come over there with Kyle, you know, to clean up the mess. But for some reason, for the reason, Alan is under the impression that Donald won't hurt him. He's like, he liked me like that. I think, you know, he kind of got a crush on me. Just because you think he may or may not like you does not mean he will not take you out if it's not going to helps his agenda like keeping the president in the white house you don't know this but see he was not gonna willing to not gonna put his wife in arms of the angel well you know have somebody put her in arms of the angel priscilla she got her weapon out like look here we're gonna we're gonna sneak up out of here your front door is the only way we can get out you know get your tail up i know you drunk and i know you don't want to go nowhere but i'm gonna need you to you know when i move you move just like that let me cut my ring off so don't nobody be disturbing us and boom, as soon as she get to the store, get to the door, who's there? Doggone it. Um, um, Secret Service assassin dude, he at the door, and they got, you know, they weapons pointed at each other. Ciao. Hold on. Okay. I was like, I was trying to figure out what my notes said. Like, oh, okay. <sighs> Donald talking to Hunter, and Hunter's like, he's forever in the flames. He's like, who's forever in the flames? 
I was like, who isn't not going to either in the arms of the angel or forever in the flames? In somebody who work in the White House or is White House adjacent? Because, baby, when I tell you, y'all got all these bodies that's going on, y'all, and y'all ain't even been in the White House a good two months. Yeah. Now Donald got to act surprised that Victoria put Jason forever in the flames like he wouldn't doggone it offered the opportunity to do it himself. Hunter, he all scared and he want to move into another room because he don't know what she going to do next. I was like, I don't think putting you forever in the flames would be it because then what? That would just give the vice president what he needs. Okay, the president is no longer here. We step in now. It's not like you were the vice president. Like It's not like Victoria's the vice president and once Hunter, Hunter go and she steps in. No, that would be stupid. But then again, we don't know what Victoria is up to at this point. Because, you know, she ain't got it all. For real, for real. But Hunter, he needs him a stress reliever. He needs a Secret Service assassin dude to get his... How, how am I going to say this? His sniffing relaxer. We trying to use words so we don't get shut down over here. You know, it goes... <laughs> that kind of stuff. Not just a regular old sniff because you got a cold, but, you know, what he like to do is make him feel free and relax. Yeah, he wants some of that and he wants Sharon. Even though Sharon don't want nothing to do with him, he don't care. He's the president. Everybody loves him. I'm like, no, Sharon don't. So Hunter calls Alonzo into the Oval Office because he needs to sneak out and Secret Service assassin dude. He is nowhere to be found. So Alonzo, Alonzo, you know, I can't keep a secret. He is in charge of becoming the temporary Secret Service assassin dude. But I'm like, how is putting on a blazer and a hat going, how is that going to sneak? Hunter out of the White House. Also, you would think that all is going on with, you know, the vice president trying to get you out. You sneaking out is a bad idea. Like, what if y'all got into an accident on to on the way to where y'all going? How are you explaining you not having your motorcade and all that other stuff? Like, where was you going in the middle of the night? Now, granted, I'm pretty sure sometimes the president, they want to sneak out on the low low. They don't want nobody to work, know where they're going and they don't want to get attacked or anything. But like you sneaking out of the White House and you not having your detail with you and, and them being in the disguise so you can be out here in the world. It just seems stupid. But then again, this is Hunter. Bobby and his beard and Max, they was able to get into the bunker and get, like, help Sam. But I was like, they was spending too much time because Max was like, let me take him out. Let me, t you know, put Kyle forever in the flames. It's like, no, dude, we need him alive. But more important, let's get Sam out here because Sam is, like, bleeding right now. And we can't be having this back and forth about you wanting to die, put Kyle up forever in the flames. My thing is that y'all should have, you know, I, I mean, y'all didn't know that Sam was, like, hurt, I guess. So, or did they? I don't remember. Maybe we should have brought in a tranquilizer gun to, you know, knock Kyle out. I still think it was stupid that, that they had a code on the, the actual jet, the bars of the cell that changes, but not on the actual door. I just thought that was stupid, but they was, um, what's his name? Max was able to get Sam out and take him to the hospital, which leads to another question. Why are we leaving Sam in the hospital alone? Like, why are we doing this? This man just got attacked. We don't know who, well, I guess they don't know what happened, so... Sam should be okay. But it's like, seeing like when you leave from the White House and you, you know, being taken away and going to the hospital, you don't make it. What you remember doggone it, um, that um maid who was being all kind of extra 
right before she had her heart attack. What happened? She left the White House, went to the hospital, and Kyle put her in the arms of the angels. So, Lily then went home to get her some money and all that other stuff. Is she leaving? Donald come in. They have this back and forth. She don't believe that the Secret Service is there because she believes he has sent them all. At one point, he got a little too close to her. And I'm like, girl, all she got to do is reach for that gun and you're going to be sitting here looking stupid. Like, you need to keep a distance between you and this man. And as soon as she get to the door, she gets shot in the shoulder area. And he's like, ha ha, you got shot. And she was, she pulled her weapon out. I was like, bam, bam, ha ha, you, you shot too. I'm in the shoulder blade. And that looked like it could have been a clean on through shot. But I got you in the belly region. Ha ha, you, you, you didn't got shot too. That was going on with them. Why was Sharon not put in an, into a, a secluded location? And not over at Richard and Nancy's house. That, 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 I'm just wondering that. Okay? So we can keep the heat off of Richard and Nancy's house. Y'all could have taken her somewhere else. Been like, hey, Mr. Vice President, dude, this is Sharon. Sharon, this is Vice President, dude. Um. She got kidnapped by the president. Yeah. Her friend was, you know, shot and all that other stuff by dying, by um, Secret Service assassin dude at the, you know, the request of Donald. We need these two. We have Kyle, what's his name? Dale, too. We need these two in, like, protective custody. Like, not put them in jail, but, like, put them somewhere that they're going to be safe. Because they out here getting kidnapped and people out here shooting them. So, maybe we should have put these two in a secure location. And not at Richard and Nancy Tower. Because they sitting there talking about how creepy serial killer Jason, you know, is forever in the flames. And Nancy's like, yeah. She said something about Hunter, and here come Hunter walking in the door like he paid bills at this house. I'm like, so th this what we doing? We just breaking and entering? Now, had they been in another room and like saw somebody, didn't recognize it was him, and they shot him, what explanation would they have that the president of the United States Walked in in the house of, you know, granted, you know, Richard works there, but walked into this house unannounced. What explanation would they have? This, it was a okay, I guess, season finale. I just wanted more. I actually watched it last night. And as of late, I've been waiting till the morning to watch it. But I was like, no. Girl, go ahead and watch it and get it on over with. I don't like the fact that I'm in this just get it over with attitude. And I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to wait, see what happens next week. But yeah. So that was the just. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment below. If you were new to my channel, welcome. Feel free to subscribe. But it's free all day, every day for 99 Make sure your notifications are on. So on my beautiful Facebook to a video, you can click on it. You can like it and share with your people. And you can come over and be one of my peoples. If you already one of my peoples, oh, welcome back. Y'all know what to do. Tell your people to tell their people to come over and be one of my peoples by clicking that icon above. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.